Hello, this is Breakfast with Sonia Diol and Charlie State. Good morning, it's Friday, February the 20th. Also ahead this morning, the... Good morning. First, our main story. The constant drive to improve standards of reading, writing and maths is failing to give children a rounded education. That's the conclusion of the biggest study into primary teaching in England for 40 years. Yes, it says art, history and even science are being squeezed out because of a fixation with testing and targets. The government says it's waiting for its own review due out later this year. And after 8 o'clock this morning, we'll be asking a primary head teacher and a government minister also if they believe that arts and sciences are being sidelined. Yes, of course, peanut allergies do affect an enormous number of people. In half an hour's time, we'll be speaking to one of the children involved. This time last year, he could have died after eating even half a peanut. If you've had experiences of your own, do let us know during the morning. Yes. Thank you. Now, we're going to have a look through uh, some of the front pages now and uh, start with the Independent, which is leading this morning on the same story as us. Uh, we're talking about this issue of uh, primary schools. Now, their headline is uh, failed. We'll be uh, exploring this further throughout the morning this morning. Yeah, front page of the Times this morning. Uh, they are leading with this. Uh, front page of the Sun. Bizarre story, this one. Uh, these images... There you go. And uh, front page of the Daily Express. There and then... Just uh, give you that picture from the front page of the uh, Daily Mail. On to the business this morning, because Susanna's there for us this morning. Hello. Uh, time now, 6.15, exactly. You're watching Breakfast from BBC News. The main stories this morning, and also coming up in the programme, we've sent our reporter Colette Hume on a trip and told her to stay in touch. Yes, Colette's finding out why the sky is no longer the limit if you want to use your mobile 32,000 feet in the air. Now let's get the latest weather picture for you. Carol is in the Blue Piece of Garden for us this morning. Hello. Now imagine you're cruising through the clouds at 32,000 feet. Usually the last thing you'd expect to hear is the trill of somebody's mobile phone. Yes, but it, it is all about to change because Ryanair is becoming the first European airline to let you use your phone in flight. We sent Colette Hume to test it out for us. I'm yeah. thinking if you're travelling, if you're flying low cost, then surely you would not want to use your mobile phone, which would in turn be very expensive. It's kind but they don't put their seatbelts on, and no. they don't... I mean, if there is confusion, people think, well, on Ryanair, you can use your phone. You've got the safety point of view, uh, which is important. Um, what about incidents of air rage? What about just being plain irritated with... That next to someone who has had a phone on, it's going off during a flight uh, already... Uh, or on the train, anywhere in a public place where a mobile's... But if you can hear someone talking and how irritating that mm. is. So Tell us your thoughts this morning. Uh, still to come in this hour, UK's... But time now to get the news where you are. Hello, this is Breakfast with Sonia Diol and Charlie State. Lots more to come this morning. Yes, we're live at a ferry port in a few minutes. We'll be finding out why many visitors from the continent now think that the UK is the best place for a cheap getaway. Yes, and just after seven, we'll speak to the schoolgirl who got first-degree burns over most of her body after just 19 minutes on a sunbed. And a bit happier story. We'll meet the actress taking on the steely glare of the Iron Lady, Margaret Thatcher, which is on your screens next week. Uh, first, though, at uh, 6.29, our main story this morning, the constant drive to improve standards of reading, writing and maths is failing to give children a rounded education. That's the conclusion of the biggest study into primary teaching in England for 40 years. Yes, it says art, history and even... And after eight, we'll be asking a primary head teacher and a government minister if they believe arts and science, sciences are being sidelined. There is a saying, you get what you pay for. And that's very true for one woman from Missouri who says her wig has saved her life. Uh, Brianna Bonds was sitting in a parking lot when she was shot by her former boyfriend as she drove off. She says her head snapped forward. She felt a bit of pain but thought nothing more. When police arrived, they found a bullet that was tangled in her hair weave. Investing a lot of money into this weave and it saved my life. It saved <laughs> my <laughs> life. <laughs> what a there great story. It tells the story in a nutshell, <laughs> doesn't it? The wig <laughs> that saved her life. It's brilliant. What's the moral of that story? Uh, that wigs are good for you. Wear a wig. Could save your life, exactly. Neither <laughs> of you have. Those are the main stories, How by the way, know? this morning. Make assumptions about my glamour. <laughs> Do you want to feel it? It's real. It's definitely real. It is. Uh, let's okay. see what's coming up later in the programme and then you get put into basically a ballot for the first 740,000 tickets which are up for grabs today. So if, for example, I wanted to buy a ticket for the first England game, yep. can I do that and how much? Yeah, you do Thank you. 
Now, with so many cheap clothes available on the high street, it seems more and more likely we are to buy an outfit and then bin it soon after. But with two million tons of unwanted clothes ending up in landfill each year, the government wants to change all that, and it's unveiling plans to make the retail industry more environmentally friendly. We're joined now by you want retailers uh, to to sign up to this agreement and to to make money uh, more ethic well eth ethically produced, I should say. Yeah. Um, uh, but can they? The question is because so many people and especially in tough times now mm. uh, want to buy clothes that are much cheaper success though and, um, and essentially one of yeah. the problems surely is that mm. the, the best way to stop people throwing things away is for people not to be fashionable and if you just, <laughs> the tr no, it's, it's an honest yeah. truth isn't it if you if you don't change your wardrobe much then you're gonna have less to throw away um, well, approach the issue of, of buying clothes what you do with them afterwards do let us know yeah it's uh, 20 to 7 right now the weak pound might be bad news for us Brits, but it's good news for tourism with the northeast of England, the surprise winner. Yes, B&B bookings are up. Ferries are full and Europeans are flocking to our shores in search of holiday bargains. Now, Laura Bickers at the beach in Tymouth. Good morning, Laura. Be beautiful seeing the dawn rise there. We'll be back there later on. Uh, time now, 6.45. You're watching Breakfast from BBC News. The main story is this morning's... Thank you very Thank much, you. Carol. Now, later this morning, we'll get the latest figures on how many people are losing their homes after falling behind on their mortgages. Susanna is at... Susanna, thank you very much. Yeah. Now, it looks pretty harmless, but for thousands of children, a bag of peanuts is something to be avoided and even feared. Now, researchers in Cambridge say they think they've found a cure for peanut allergies. And strange as it may seem, it involves treating sufferers by giving them the peanuts which could otherwise have killed them. <laughs> now, just a reminder, uh, do not, obviously, try this at home. This trial was done in laboratory conditions. It's been tested. So if your child has a peanut allergy, do not try this method yourself. Absolutely. It's uh, four minutes to seven. Still to come here on Breakfast. Uh, time now, though, to get the news where you are. Uh, and you can see Margaret's on BBC Two. That's on Thursday at uh, 9 p.m. Yeah, and it is really, really good. I got a chance to see it last night. Now, that's it for today, but we'll be here over the weekend. Back tomorrow morning from 6 with all the latest news. Yes, and of course, on Monday, we will be live in Los Angeles on the red carpet for news of all the winners and losers at this year's Oscars. Of course, we'll find out which dress Susanna has gone for. Have a lovely Master. day. Bye-bye.